Hello dear children. In a chapter 2 of history, early nationalist movement, in the previous class we had learned the meaning of revolution, the meaning of a nation and it is the age of revolution when revolution were brought in America and France. Being inspired by them, many other countries also brought changes. We had learned the oppressive taxation of the British and uh, there was Sugar Act, there was Stamp Act and there was Boston Tea Party. When the Boston Tea Party uh, incident happened, being inspired by many of the philosophers, uh, the representatives of the colonies uh, of uh, America uh, appealed before the King George III who was the ruler of England and uh, requested to repeal all the taxation onto them. The 13 colonies as you will find in your textbook in this, this part of it I am showing. These were the 13 colonies in the uh, America which were small small states like this and this col colony inhabitants requested the British government the ruler then was King George III to bring changes but they did not bring any change they did not withdraw the stamp act or uh, sugar act they continued their oppressive rule over the American colonies However, the Boston Tea Party was looked at as the open defense of the people of American colonies against the British Parliament. Next, we are learning the Declaration of Independence. Children, in the beginning of your lesson, uh, there is a timeline we need to follow. All of you mark them and in, a, in your paper sheet uh, of notepad, in horizontally you just draw these lines and mention the events given in the timeline. Okay, in the front of the lesson. The Declaration of Independence of America on 4th July 1776, the representatives of 13 colonies held a conference at Philadelphia in America and they had decided with many of the points, the points were written in that is called the Declaration of Independence of America and adopted the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration was drafted or written by Thomas Jefferson. He was an American philosopher. Who was Thomas Jefferson? An American philosopher. What does that draft mention? What are the points in that? The, the points of the declaration state, it stated all men are equal and are endowed with the inalienable right. Inalienable is inseparable right to life, liberty and of happiness. So anybody who is born should have this right to live in happiness and right to life. That, that should be the right granted to them. Because of the British rule, they were not getting the right to life, the right to liberty and happiness. They were being exploited by the British. The declaration also read, it asserted the right of people to form their government. Two points you may be asked about the uh, American uh, Declaration of Independence. Number one is, all men are equal and are endowed with an inalienable right to life, liberty and happiness and to form their own government. They were not having the power or chance to form their own government. The government was run by the British from another country. The British government refused to respect these rights. The demands written in the declaration were refused by the British. Hence, it turned into a war. The people demanded something. The British did not agree. So, with, with, between the local leaders of American colonies and British rulers, there was a war. George Washington commanded the American forces and defeated the British forces in 1781 and the British army was led by Lord Cornwallis. 
This Lord Cornwallis was also once a viceroy or governor general in India. So by George Washington's army, English army led by Lord Cornwallis was defeated in the year 1781. So what happened next in 1783, the Treaty of Paris was signed and England recognized the independence of 13 colonies which merged to form USA. That is how the American declaration of independence happened. They fought against the exploitative British rulers and then they successfully defeated the British uh, general Lord Cornwallis till they were not given the rights. Finally, they signed a treaty or agreement in the year 1783. It was known as the Treaty of Paris. And this treaty recognized or England recognized the independence of these 13 colonies which were ruled by England. And later the 13 colonies merged to form the United States of America. There were 34 states by this time. America now has 50 states and 13 colonies. By this time, 1776 to 1783, they had uh, just 34 states. Then after the declaration of independence being accepted or permitted by the British under the Treaty of Paris, they, there were some changes in the governance of these colonies. That is what we learn under the impact. What were the changes made to the American colonies. The colonial British rule ended after the American declaration. The federal government was recognized into three branches like we have now the legislative, the executive and the judiciary. The three branches of the government were recognized. The federal government was recognized into three branches. A federal government is that whose states are free to run their own governance. George Washington became the first president of United States of America. With this, they had adopted their constitution and the Bill of Rights was also adopted in 1791. The people of the colony were demanding for their rights, right to life, liberty and other forms of rights. And they, written, they had written them in, into their constitution, uh, the Bill of Rights that was adopted in America in 1791. Then that was okay with the people of their own uh, staying together, the American North and South, South part of Americans. In few years, there was a, a kind of change that the southern part of the Americans did not like to be united while the northern part of America had progressed with its industries, wanted to remain united with the southern. There, there was a civil war, that is the war amongst the countrymen, the northern part and the southern part. People fought a war in America known as civil war. What were the causes of that civil war? After establishing as a democratic country, a federal government is that in which several states were there who were, had right to rule themselves. It was also democratic because elections were held. After establishing a democratic country, America marched towards economic progress with its industries. The northern states of America had many of the industries. Towns and cities grew with new roads, canals and railways and development was seen in different parts uh, in North America. While in South America, it was an agrarian territory where plantations of crops carried on. So new roads, canals and railways were made in North America while South America had large plantations of cash crops. Crops like cotton or 
anything like tobacco that they grew were the cash crops done under the plantations. What happened? Meanwhile, the uh, Europe was in the initial stage of industrial revolution. This was the period we are talking about 1776, 75 to 83 or end of this century. That was the beginning of industrial revolution from 1750 to 1850. So it was in Europe, it was the beginning stage of industrial revolution. Revolution is change, change made because of the setting up of industries. The South American states supplied cotton for the textile industries. To meet the need of labor, slaves were brought from Africa. So the labors were not sufficient in their part. They brought them from America to work on the textile industries and to grow cotton as in the plantations. So these slaves who were the labors were ill-treated and had to live in unhygienic and inhuman conditions. Slaves were labors who were bought and sold like animals. So those of the people who were bought and sold to work as labor, they were bought and sold like animals. They were also treated like in animals and left to live in unhygienic and inhuman conditions. Hence, the evil practice of slavery continued in this part of America, southern part of America. Many of the American philosophers and the northern leaders did not like this slavery to happen. To stop this, the northern states began the anti-slavery movement. Northern states which were plain, uh, developed with the industries, they did not like the southern states to have these plantation workers brought from Africa and live in inhuman condition. So they started a movement called anti-slavery movement which was strengthened by Harriet Peter Stowe's novel Uncle Tom's Cabin that portrayed ugly side of the slavery. I say slaves were living in inhuman and unhygienic conditions. They were chained in the nights. They were made to walk day and night. They did not have any personal freedom. They were beaten for not doing the work sufficient. So those things were practiced. Uncle Tom's Cabin was a novel or storybook in which the story of slavery was shown. So that portrayed ugly side of slavery in the book called Uncle Tom's Cabin written by Harriet Beecher Stowe. With this we will come to the end of today's lesson. Next we will learn about the other causes like uh, first cause we learned about slavery. Second is that the people of southern part did not like to have a united state. So, they uh, did not like the interference of northern leaders. Uh, this much for now. Keep learning. Stay home. Stay safe. Bye-bye.